ship, the Debacle, registered freelance transport freighter. Date, March 3rd, 2143 CE. Current occupants, two, human. Time wasted by Commonwealth Intelligence Service observing this, 3.2 hours. Employees about to be fired, two. Final comments, good riddance. Can't this thing go any faster? Another word out of you and I'll double your fare. What? You're already charging an insane amount for this trip already. I'm not a taxi service, you know. I transport goods, not people. Then why did you offer to give me a ride to Pluto then? Because you paid enough. A better question, I think, is why you did not just catch a shuttle. I would rather stay away from public transit at the moment. Why? What's preferable about traveling with hay? The key word in my previous statement is I'm avoiding public transit. Hey, anything I should know about? You didn't peel a man, did you? Go, what? No! Well, never killed exactly. Okay, then what? You don't look like a crackhead. No, I am not a druggie. Then what are you hiding? <sighs> Fine. I'll tell you then. I don't think I'll get you to shut up otherwise. My ship, my conversation. Whatever. Anyways, did you hear about that shuttle crash aboard the Labrador? Oh yeah, that one was hilarious. What kind of dope can't land a tin crate like that? A good one! Wait, that was you? Hmm. I understand why you don't want to be seen in public then. So, anything else you'd like to tell me? No, I don't want to talk about it. Well then, it is no fun for me if I don't make you squirm. This is why you became in charge of freight rather than counting people, isn't it? Maybe, maybe not. But it is another two and a half hours to your destination, and I want to hear your tale. Who knows, I might just maybe think you less of a goof if I hear your side of the story. It's not bloody likely, but give it a shot, man. Then will you go back to annoying your crates of broccoli in the real hold? Well, not just the broccoli, but yes, promise. Well, the Labrador had been going under a few changes before I'd arrived. Its former captain, an angry bureaucratic man in his 70s, had fallen off his porch from a heart attack. The favorite death of gourmet epicure, a body clogged with nourishing gravy. Yeah, but I don't think that the heart attack was natural causes. That first officer of his seemed to have a sizable chip on her shoulder. Knowing the old guy, she probably typed him an atrociously done report in the hope that he would just drop like a fly. And so he did. Ah, a career woman. I did not know bad spelling could be a promotional move. That is just it. It wasn't. Guess who they chose to command the Labrador? Not Hall. You? Frankly, buddy, even before you were a disgrace, I would not choose you to look after a puppy, even a heavily lethargic and fully house-trained wonder of one. I was a captain. Only I was in shipping like you. A fisher shipping, mind, not freelance work. I had a title, a mediocre but easy job, and a degree of freedom. Naturally, I was flabbergasted and not entirely pleased to hear that command had chosen me to take over a real ship. And then your ship kicked the bucket? Only the bucket was the tarmac? Pretty much, though I still swear something was up with the transport. The cockpit filled with gas or something, and all these lights and sirens are going off. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Save your excuses for whatever gods, goddesses, or pink elephants you happen to believe in. But just because hauling hay around is boring work, I'll ask what happened next. They seemed happy enough just to let go at first, actually. Until that bloodhound force officer realized I could easily lose my command if she put enough strings. So basically, she axed me in the back like she did poor old Captain Julius. I was just charged and have my rank stripped. So why in ass itching hell are you going to Pluto then, desire a numb frozen soul? Hardly. The Commonwealth takes old scrap metal and other refuse from Earth and dumps it still so the locals can earn a living bashing out budget spaceships. I figure I'll buy one and maybe try to get back into haulage outside of the Commonwealth fleet, or I find something else to do that'll get me some income. I'm not all that picky. So, you are going to try at following in my footsteps then, are you, buddy? Well, if you can do it, anyone can. <sighs> what in Jupiter's red stain was that? 
Oh, sorry, buddy. Just some turbulence. Now, if you show me a little more respect, it might just prevent something else happening. Like, let's say, faulty struts. <sighs> The dwarf planet of Pluto. Primary economic activity, earth waste keeping and refurbishing. Quality of life, minimal. Interests, succession, getting noticed by someone, maybe getting a tourist or two. Bingo! Can I help you, sir? Uh, yeah. I was told this is a good place to get a cheap space-filling vehicle. That is right, sir. You can always find a bargain here. Well, I cannot help but notice that none of these look particularly space-filling. Generally, spaceships do not have cracks in their windshields. Open cracks. Well, the exact definition of space-filling is always a matter for the courts to decide, sir. They look fine to me, though, and you'll just have to accept that as I say it. All right, fine. So what do you have? Well, someone of your grungy luck can't afford anything great, so I'll just go ahead and recommend you the rover. Yeah, and I bet you designed for luxury cruise ships. Still, it's true that I'm somewhat cash-strapped at the moment. What is this rover, then? Our cheapest craft. Been in our lot for about three years now. We forged from an old Terran all-terrain vehicle some years ago. That green, gray, and white mold over there. Uh, I don't know. It looks like a death trap to me. <clears throat> but so... Do you realize that this one comes with a free android? Android? One of those clunky metal guys? Yeah! Hey, you stupid piece of spark plugs and jagged metal! Get over here! Yes, Greasy? Say hello to the man who, God willing, will be taking you out of here. Captain James, Commonwealth Fleet Haulage. Peter Gensley, Android at Large. That's a rather dull name for an android. So you're going to be named GC-FM1 or ZX1 or something? Something mechanical and futurely sounding? Yes, sir. I've often wondered about that fact myself. Great. A robot with identity concerns. By the way, sir, you are not actually a captain anymore. Lying is a bad habit, I'm told. Never fully understood why. Never got a good explanation. And how would you know? I have the ability to read and scan just about every consumer electrical device invented. I do hope you don't mind if I read through your electronic journal once in a while. That's it. Forget your stupid rover. None of this thing is included. What else is there? Well, there is also the Cambrian. Retired from the Commonwealth Fleet after nearly 40 years in service. A bit cranky, but still a very fair ship. Now that one I do like. What's the price? <gasps> alright, alright. I'll take the rope. Ahem. Ow. Sounds additional gift if you don't mind. <sighs> Look, he's part of the arrangement. Take the ship, take him, or no deal. Fine. I suppose I can use them to distract clients or something. Or better yet, I could distract them while he could swatch their pockets. Uh, that'll do for me. Thanks for doing business with you. Tell you what, would you like to sign a mechanics contract with us? We do halfway to pay on some vehicles purchased here. Ever met their mechanics or seen their handiwork? Don't do it. <sighs> what do you say then, sir? I think I'll give that off for a miss. Yes, it's a space coat. Would you at least consider joining our owner's club? You get great benefits the next time you buy a vehicle. All you have to do is recommend us whenever you can, and... Pyramid scheme! <sighs> Ow. Ah. So what do you say, then, valued customer? Yeah, I think I'll give that a miss for the time being as well. <sighs> Alright, so You may take your merchandise out of the lot, then. Sure. Come along, you. Well, farewell, Baldy. Pin in the neck. At least I got rid of that blasted robot. What is he against you so much exactly, anyway? I point out something about him he does not like. And that is? That greasy hair. That is just to help comb over his bald spot. Vanity thy name is Salesman? Something like that, sir. 
Well, lay off on that stuff for me. But lay it onto other people and you might be worth a few laughs. I don't selectively choose who I analyze, sir. I won't get my hopes up too high then. The OK ship space rover. Price, only 12,000 terrans. Additional repair cost may apply. Wait, what do I mean by may? Well, Captain, welcome to your new command. Do I detect a trace of sarcasm? Indeed. But you'll probably get tired of using that tone soon, sir. I meant you! Did you? I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was only making a simple, truthful statement. All right. Forget it. Memory erased. Happy now, sir? As much as I'm going to be, I guess. Oh, well. I guess this ship's not so bad. Though I wonder how it will fly. What was your old one like, sir? Oh, wonderful. Seating as smooth as silk. Gentle and well-greased brakes, and upholstery as soft as cashmere. A legacy report on that electronic organizer in your interior coat pocket has you saying it was burnt out and that you needed a brand new one. Yeah, that was me trying to get something even better from him. Never be honest to your superiors, my fair titanium friend. I will keep that in mind when dealing with you, sir. You do that and I'll throw you out from altitude and get you to land on Baldy. Um, so how did you get such a good ship, then? I was good friends with someone down in the engineering corps who managed to get me one of the latest carrier cruisers. A truly wonderful machine. And then you crashed it into the landing bay floor of the SCW Labrador? I assume you got that from my journal, but no. It wasn't my cruiser I crashed. For the journey to my new command, I was using a clunky old thing from the late 2120s. I still blame that damn thing for what happened. But that's not what the Fleet Review Board thought. Yes, well, I'd put that all down to a certain lady who once turned off spell-checking in Angle. What? I don't follow you, sir. Oh, never mind. Anyways, enough about my past. I'd rather not look in that direction right now. As much as I feel the answer, what's your backstory like, then? I was constructed on March 14th, 2135, at Metal Man Manufacturing on Ganymede, destined to work for the rich and famous. And yet you ended up a mechanic or a greasy salesman on Pluto? One certain prominent executive seemed to not have liked my perceptions of the truth. Don't we all? Anyways, after that I spent a brief spell on Europa, manning an assembly line. Internal emitter system engaged. And a jolly good morning to you all! Uh, not another one. Hmm, belt a little too tight, guy? <laughs> you know, I've always wanted a pair of boots like those, though I don't have real feet. Hey, I'm seeing double. Who are you and what are you doing aboard my ship? Call this a ship? This tin can is barely space-worthy. It is a hologram, sir. An artificial intelligence personality generated as light particles. They are commonly used as slave labor in the terraformed colonial work camps all around the place. Why? By default, being made of light, they cannot interact with anything. They do have a special interface mode that rearranges their particles to be closer together, and thus effectively solid, though highly power draining. This is how they are used for slave labor. Wouldn't the resorting power drain want answers like you to be a better option? The main reason they are used as slaves for manual labor, instead, is that when they get a bit, well, tetchy, the management can just flick a switch and they are unable to damage anything. Few other workers can be incapacitated so easily in times of labor unrest. Certainly not steel-hard androids. Yes, yeah, not a very nice system. How'd you like if I kept paralyzing you humans if I wanted to? Preferably for 2 by 4 Shut up, you! Petal, answer me this. How come you look so much like me? It is a built-in ego feature. Holograms take the shape of their masters. Since you are the registered owner of this vessel now, this ship's projector made him look like you. Though this does cause some physical issues when holographic workers form into the fat old rich men who own them. But then why doesn't he look exactly like me? Are you kidding? You're hideous! I actually took the initiative to corrupt the template. Oh, ugly as say! 
Name one whether I'm hideous. The white streak in your hair makes you look like a skunk. Humph. I find that makes me look unique. That it does, you stinking piece of roadkill. Okay, I've had enough. What are you doing here on my ship anyway? Simple. I don't want to be a slave, and I don't want to be constantly switched between interface and palisade mode like I'm some sub-person. I want freedom. That's why I escaped a war camp through its network and found my way to your battle road ships in middle over the sub-ether. Well, I don't think so. I think I would turn you in. He could be useful as a spare pair of hands, Captain. With an added bonus that when he is turned off, he doesn't take up valuable interior space. There aren't many other persons, organic or mechanical, that can say that. This is a very small ship, sir. Yep, that is me, all right. Useful is also uncompact. Just every handyman's dream. I am surprised that you did not already know about holograms, Captain. Look, I worked as a transport ship captain for the Space Commonwealth Fleet. I didn't spend my time reading up on every putrid little device he managed to device to handle its dirty work on some far of asteroid mines in the middle of nowhere. Hey now! Oh yes, slave. Don't be so high and mighty. I read your file. You forgot to mention that you are disgraced, Commonwealth Transport Captain. My, my, how very vulgar. I don't care he's in our set of hands. I don't trust what his hands would do. Besides, I can't even stand being near him now. Et tu, Brute? What? Classical proverb. I think the hologram... That is just hologram to you. You are called merely by your hardware type? I do have my war camp code name. Which was... Hologram 666. Oh my, how apt. That can't be right. Powering 666 holograms on one grid would take as much energy as North America consumes in a month. I was not the 666 hologram. The Numo was christened onto me. I think I can see why. I cracked the camp's computer to think that there was a hologram pie. Calculating that caused an overload, so they branded me with the number of the beast. There did they know that I actually like it, poor fools. My kingdom for a map joke that doesn't involve pie. As much as I'd regret to interrupt this conversation, we probably shouldn't loiter around in this lot any longer. I'll begin pre-ignition testing. <sighs> okay, everyone. Time to test this ship. Three, two, one. What the hell? Auto attack! Abandoned ship! Ah! Ah! Hmm. Damn stupid. This ship is powered by an acid battery. Why did it go bang then? When lead acid batteries overload, they explode. Not so good at advice that needs to maintain integrity at all costs. We almost get blown up and you talk like you're giving a damn university lecture. No, this is talking like a lecturer. And Darwin and Wallace's revolutionary theories forever changed our understanding of biology. Shut up! So why did the battery overload? Why would just turning on the ship do that? It happens. Gone from lecturer to fatalist in one swift swoop. Well done. Hey, what does this button do? Careful. That is near the holographic projector controls. Press uh, <laughs> that button again. I'm trying. <laughs> Why the hell would someone add a feature like that? Actually, I think he coded that into the control pad himself while I was preparing for launch. All right, that should fix that. Everyone ready to go? Just get me out of here. Peter. Let's dump him first. He's off again. Thank God of gods for that. Well, I'm hoping for a quiet takeoff. Alright, let's do it then. Three, two, one, lunch! Every bone in my body, but I am off that rock. Yippee. Sake fault! Sake fault! Please reboot firmware! Alert! Alert! Hey you, light bulb. That is hologram to you. Whatever. Watch this. Mm. 
What? You have weapons on this tin can? Yeah, special feature. Arranged by that greasy salesman. Isn't it illegal for private ships to have weaponry without proper registration? Nonsense! The Space Commonwealth Charter clearly states the right to bear arms. You mean the right to bear arms? B-A-R-E! Certainly not a hell trick or Gatling gun. Huh? Why would that be in the Charter, you fool? If we read up on history, during the Commonwealth's founding at the Lunar Conference, there was a humongous lobby for a large clothing company. They were hoping to make a killing selling t-shirts containing popular phrases of the day, as the solar economy stabilized again. As if. I usually just get my clothes used from a thrift store. That's real economy. However, they were worried that t-shirts would be banned in the New Order, as many government officials were reputedly extra attractive to arm-sucking parasites due to elitist inbreeding or some such. And as personal interest always rules the day, the company felt the need to lobby to make the right to bear arms law. Damn stupid, eh? You made that all up, didn't you? I wish I did. Honestly, isn't history a funny thing? Ah, but remember the history is written by the winners. And the winners had a sixth sense of humor, did they? So seriously, are you really thinking you're tying me in for having a cannon? Given this ship is probably below code, that android of yours is running illegally obsolete firmware and I'm a rogue electronic slave, I don't see the problem breaking another little law. Heh, <laughs> all rules are meant to be broken. Indeed. So I do wonder what lawmakers and bureaucrats think of that proverb. Oh, I'm sure it just brings them all to tears. Still, it is nice to have some additional dirt to use on you if I ever need to. What? How dare you? Come on! Aren't you just as willing to try and report me to the authorities should the mood strike you? Yes, but you are genuinely a rogue criminal. I'm mostly an honorable law-abiding citizen, thank you very much. Tell that to your bootleg pile of laser discs back there. <sighs> Honestly, Peter, I don't see why you want to keep him around. I've already made my reasons quite clear. An easy-to-store extra pair of hands. You just mean that so I won't get you to do all the walk. That thought had crossed my mind. Well, I disagree. The man is annoying and irrational and... Sounds just like you, in a nutshell. That's what I mean. He's trying to steal my identity. The mimicry system is supposed to be flattering. How would you like it if someone appeared who looked just like you? Well, it would allow me to rob a bank and frame the look-alike. Ha <laughs> ha, hilarious. Besides, I doubt he is after your identity, sir. Who would want to steal that from someone now infamous as a disgrace? I told you to stop mentioning that. We are being hailed, sir. Oh? All right. Put it on, then. Beating, sir! If our information is correct, you are Captain James. We really have the Labrador? Who wants to know? Yep, that's your voice, all right. I'm from Big Mash Network News, and we would like to do a feature on you. Would you consent to an interview? Is this about that incident aboard the Labrador? With respect, why else would anyone want to talk to you? Well, forget it. I have enough hassle going through that tribunal. Just one interview. Pretty please. He said no, sir. All right, then. Give me an interview, or we'll give your location to all our competitors. That hassle enough for you? Blackmail? Hmm. A new side to investigative journalism. Then again, perhaps not. Fine, I'll do it. Just give me a little time to collect myself and my thoughts. Excellent, sir. I expect you'll apply within the hour. Any ideas, Petal? I'm thinking about it, sir. Why don't I just use our guns on the smug git? Why is everyone I tend to meet so damn socially dysfunctional? Like seeks out like, I guess, sir. Anyways, I don't think the Commonwealth Police would much appreciate your suggestion, especially with you having been dishonorably discharged. Not exactly a good case in front of a jury towards good conduct and behavior, is it? Oh, that blasted reporter. I guess I just have to go through with it. Maybe not, sir. I've just gotten an idea. Really? What is it? This isn't just a setup for another snidey remark, is it? Not at all. My idea is simple. You were only just complaining about having a look-alike. Big Mash Network News! Bringing the whole mismatch of modern life together for you in easily swallowable chunks. Whether or not they are accurate chunks is someone else's problem. Ah, welcome aboard our mobile studio, Captain! No sweat. Sorry about my trepidation earlier. I wasn't myself. Wait a second! Your voice! Sounds a little different than before. That was how I sound when I talk into a microphone, not how I sound in person. Oh, I see. Well, you do look basically like how you did in the photos supplied. Yep, my same old handsome self. Uh, yeah, sure. Anyways, let's start this interview. 
You were recently dishonorably discharged from the Commonwealth Fleet shortly after being given command of the SCW Labrador. Would you tell us why that happened? Certainly. I crashed into the landing strip while bringing down my craft. A remarkably candid reply. Do you wish to tell us your reasons for doing it? Sure. I was paid to do it. You were? This is most shocking. The tribunal put you down as an incompetent. Now you're saying you're actually a saboteur? Well, that is a strong word, but yes. But I said what the tribunal declared were wrong. Will you tell us who paid you to do it then? No one less than one of the most popular media companies. Really? Why? Well, news have been slow lately. Ratings have been down and they just wanted something to put up at 6 o'clock to attract viewer interest. They thought a terrorist crash would be most interesting. Again, I must say this is most shocking. During the tribunal, you claimed that the system went nuts and the ship tried to gas you. Why did you do that? The original deal was I would go down for terrorism and then the media company would secretly bribe my way out and I would assume life under a new name. However, one of the agents came and told me that part of the deal was off. I was only trying to save myself from prison. And while your claim of mechanical failure didn't fly, you did manage to only get charged with gross incompetence and were kicked out of the fleet? That's right. And as humiliating as it was, I was relieved to have gone out of it a free man. I am sure so. But who did pay you to do it exactly? I'm sure you want to take them down too with this confession. Of course. That's the whole reason I decided to talk to you. I have to get off on criminal charges by revealing this information to the authorities while those traitors get hammered by that gavel. Who did pay you then, sir? Me and my viewers are dying to know. Big Mash Network. Something wrong, my good man? How dare you! We're the most powerful network in the galaxy! We'll crush you! Well, if you won't report it, I'll go and tell another reporter. All right, all right, you win. It's true. We've been artificially creating disasters for years to bring up the ratings. How much do you want for you to hush this up? Cash, and lots of it. That I want to be left alone from here on in. No more interviews. All right, and absolutely. I'll transfer some funds to your account. Just give me a second. Okay, I got it done. I'll let you return to your ship as long as you both understand that this is the end of this. Certainly. Just one final thing to note. I am not Captain James. What? I'm actually a hologram posing as him. Too scared to threaten us in person, is he? Playing with smoke and mirrors instead? Something like that. By the way, the story about the setup? I made it up. Aha! Then you don't actually have any names or anything. Who's the court going to believe? The world's largest provider in streaming entertainment? Or some petty ex-captain in his toys? Hmm, you do realize that everything I hear is digitally recorded, right? Listen to this. All right, all right, you win. It's true. We've been artificially creating disasters for years to bring up the ratings. How much do you want for you to hush this up? Okay, okay. Once again, you win. Congratulations. You put off the public scam. Thank you. I assume you won't have any problem with me saying ta-ta for now then. I'm paid and you know your place. I think our business together is complete. Yes, I guess. Just don't try and pull this off again. Oh, don't worry. I most certainly will try this again. All right, Capitan, transfer me back to the ship's in the middle. Just a second. You do realize that everything I hear is digitally recorded, right? Listen to this. All right, all right, you win. It's true. We've been artificially creating disasters for years to bring up the ratings. <laughs> <laughs> ha Well, what do you say, Captain? Has the hologram proven his worth? Oh, yes, my master. Has Doggy done good? As much as I hate to say it, I guess I do owe you one now. All right. Doggy gets a home. Bark, bark, oh! But only if he promises to refrain from barking. Yeah? Stop that! Mmm! For Callisto's sake! Quit being so infantile! Wah! Baby want a bottle! Wah! With respect, sir, you walked right into that one. All right, all right. We can all see your former came with Larry's Great Sound Effects 4.0. Now shut up! Sounds mighty elegant. Spending me to spend all my time only mimicking your species, and only the adult kind at that. He's got a point. Why should we only ever sound like humans? We're not human. Yeah, I'll be you for a moment. Beep, roar, beep, segfort, segfort, segfort. Uh... Ah, I've got a virus! Help, help! Oh my! My sword insides are calling for battery acid! Oh me, oh me, oh my! Seriously, let's get rid of him. I only like it when I'm right. 
Captain James and the reporter was played by Hamish Wilson. Malcolm Wilson played Peter Gansley, the debacle pilot, and the narrator. While Graham Wilson played Hologram and the salesman. Yes, it is a rather small little cast, isn't it? The head writer was Graham Wilson, with Hamish Wilson as head editor and Malcolm Wilson as director. The series was written using LibreOffice Writer, and the music, audio effects, and general editing were completed by Malcolm Wilson using Audacity. Space Rover is a Fedora-powered project hosted by ikilis.org, mirrored on the Internet Archive and YouTube, while distributed in free and non-patented OGG Verbis and flat formats. Special thanks to Grant Naylor Productions and Douglas Adams for the series inspiration as well as the venerable Land Rover car manufacturer. Please do not sue. Tune in next week when Peter Gansley says... Copyright 2013 Malcolm Wilson Multimedia. Dual licensed under the GFDL and CCBYSA copyless. Usage attributions available on the Space Rover website.